friends, welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie, and in this video, I'm going to teach you a fundamental operation called rename operation in relational algebra. So rename operation is used to rename a relationship to avoid ambiguity. Ambiguity is caused when you give confusing instructions within your programming language. So this is something that has to be avoided and every language tries to avoid it. So uh, this type of confusion can be avoided using the rename operation. And we'll see that with an example. And it's also a unary operation. So you do not need to provide two relations for it to work. You have to provide only one relation. And that would make the rename operation produce a result. So before we get started, in order to understand what's there in this video, you need to understand the fundamental operations called um, select, project, Cartesian product, and set difference. And in case you wish to refer to these relations, uh, you can go ahead and watch the videos linked down below. So the relation that we are going to use for this particular video is this relation containing four instructors, their names, IDs, the departments they work in, and the salaries that they have. Now imagine that you want to do instructor cross instructor, which means you want to take a Cartesian product of instructor with itself. So what that would look like is this is your instructor relation and it would combine four rows of instructor relation with the same four rows of instructor relation. That gives you um, totally 16 rows because there are four here and four there. So what it looks like is you take the first row from here, combine it with all four rows, take the second row and combine with all four, third row with all four and fourth row with all four. So you get totally 16 rows and the number of columns will be four of this and four of the other instructor relation, which gives you totally eight columns. So let's see what that looks like. It'll look like this, this huge table containing 16 rows. You can see that it contains eight columns and you can see that this is the first uh, row, which is combined with one, two, three, four, all four rows. And then the second row is combined four times with one, two, three, four. The third row is also combined with one, two, three, four, and fourth is combined with one, two, three, four. So this is what your relation looks like. In case you can't see the bottom part, you can see it now. Okay. Now what happens after this is, suppose I want to use the select operation now. So what that would look like can I use it in this manner? Sigma instructor.salary greater than instructor.salary and then instructor cross instructor. Now this is the same ambiguity that we were talking about. When you say instructor.salary and instructor.salary and the relations inside the bracket are also the same. So what are you trying to refer to when you say instructor.salary? Is it this relation or is it this relation? So this is an incorrect way it causes ambiguity. And in order to avoid this ambiguity, we have to use this type of a rename operation, which is here. So this is a correct way. And what that shows is basically that uh, for rename operation, we use the symbol rho. This is again a Greek symbol like sigma. So rho is used and next to rho in subscript, we write down a new name for the ambiguous relation. So we have instructor and because instructor is coming again, we are renaming it to the letter D. Let's say that D stands for duplicate. So we are renaming it to the letter D. And now for these two instructions here, what I'm doing is first one is instructor.salary. And the second one is D dot salary. So this way I know that the first is referring to the salary column of instructor. And the second one is referring to the salary column of the relation that I have renamed to be D. Now this rename is working only for the query that I'm writing. Okay. 
because relational algebra is not a language that we are going to actually implement. So it doesn't matter what uh, whether we rename a relation or not, but only for the purpose of the query, we are allowed to do this using the rename operation, which is here. Okay. Now, what is the result of that query? The query, which we just saw, what it says is, from the first table, the salary should be less than the salary from the second table, which is D. So I want only those rows where salary from the left side is less than salary from the right side. And our original table looked like this. And what I've done is marked red all the rows that do not satisfy the criterion, criterion mentioned before. So for example, this is the first row and it contains 50,000 and here it contains 50,000. And you cannot say that 50,000 is less than 50,000. So the first row will not be included because it does not satisfy a criterion. So we mark it red. The second row, 50 less than 55 is correct. So we keep it. 50 and 50 again, not satisfied. So mark it red. 50,000 is less than 70,000, which is true. So we are going to keep this row. And the next three rows, you have 55,000 less than 50,000 is not satisfying the criterion. 55 less than 55 and 55 less than 50. So all three rows are supposed to be removed. Then you have 50, 55,000 less than 70,000, which is correct. So we are going to keep it. 50 with 50, not possible. It's not less, so we keep it red. Then 50 is less than 50,000, 55,000, sorry. So this is uh, kept. 50,000 is not less than 50,000, so let's mark it red. 50,000 is less than 70,000, so this row we are going to keep. And then as you can see, here you have 70,000 coming four times, and it's not less than any of these values. So we are going to remove all four rows. So at the end of this, what happens is, we are going to remove all these rows. So what you have left is you're having John twice, Mark and Luke twice. So, and on the other side you have Mark twice and Mary three times. So let's see what that looks like. This is your final result. The query that we wrote was sigma instructor dot salary less than D dot salary, and then instructor cross row D of instructor. So these are the values you're getting. If you check the salaries over here, they are all less than the salaries on the right side. 50, 55, 50, 70, 55, 70, 50, 55, and 50, 70. So this is the correct result. And then what we do is after this, let's say that um, I want to add this particular instruction here. From this relation, I only want this column the salary column of the first relation. So it's the same query, but outside of it, I'm using the project operation and writing down instructor.salary. So this leaves me with only one column from this entire table. And then what I'll do with this is I want to find the largest salary. Now there's a very simple way of doing this. And if you go back to the previous uh, instruction that we did, you see the salary column that we fetched from here contains all the salaries present in the instructor relation. It contains 50, 55, and 50 again, multiple times. So it contains all the salaries except the salary that is 70,000, which you can see here, because that is not less than any salary. But now I want to get the largest salary of the instructor relation, and to do that, what I'm going to do is the steps that I'll show here. Okay, the first step is, this is our original query. And what we apply to it is first we do pi salary from instructor. So this fetches all the salaries of the original instructor relation which had four rows which I showed you in the beginning of the video. From there, we are going to apply the minus operation 
and this minus operation is the set difference operation and we will subtract from it the uh, the query which is shown here which was our original query so I'll give you a little bit of a visualization of what this looks like actually so this is what it looks like this is your original relation from which you did by salary of instructor which gave you just the salary column with all the four different salaries and then from this salary column we are subtracting the result of our previous query which we got which contained 50,000 four times and 55,000 once. So how the minus operation works is it tries to remove the common salaries, common salaries in the sense whatever is there in the right side of minus is removed from the left side of the minus if it is present. So for example, 50,000 is appearing several times and on the left side it appears twice. So both the times it is removed. Then on the right side, 55,000 is coming and here also 55,000 is coming. So that is removed. The only thing that remains is 70,000, which is the largest salary and which we wanted to get. So basically this led you to get 70,000, which is the largest salary of all. So finally, let's have a look at the original whole query again, the whole query, the big picture. What we did is we took out by salary from instructor. This gives us only the salary column from the original instructor relation. And from there we are subtracting the result of this second query. And what the second query does is we'll try to look at it from inside. Remember always close and open brackets as uh, consistently as possible. Otherwise it creates an error. So we'll try to look at it from inside. There is an instructor relation and we renamed it to D. And then we multiplied it with uh, itself, the same instructor relation. From there, we are trying to find out only those rows which have the salary from the left side instructor relation less than salaries from this right side instructor relation, which we renamed as D. After we find those rows, we found five such rows. And after we found those rows, we took out from there the salary column, which contained those five salaries, which were less than some salary. And obviously we are subtracting this from the original salary column from instructor. And what this generated is the largest salary, 70,000. And this was done because we could use the rename operation. So the rename operation is uh, a very good interview question and it is asked uh, many times when people appear for uh, interviews related to database and later on even if you do SQL that is the structured query language which is used for programming uh, queries into the database there also we are going to do something similar to this because this is a very important question asked in different interviews. So that's it for this video and see you for the next one. Thank you for watching.